This video has been supported by my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can give you guys regular content and updates. It also helps me improve my channel and go to overseas conventions more often. So what are you waiting for? Go check me out on Patreon and from just $1 a month, you can support me and the channel, get personal fursuit making help, and get some great rewards. Hope to see you there. Enjoy the video. Hello everybody, and welcome to a floor tutorial. A, a tutorial, if you will. For how to do Floppy folded fursuit ears. This is actually wildly requested and I'm unsure as to why because to me it was pretty intuitive but I'm gonna lay it all out for you guys today. So meet Bodhi. Bodhi is a Labrador retriever and Labradors have floppy ears. As you can see I've already started on one of them but I'm gonna tell you guys how I'm gonna do it. So I have started, already done his foam carve and obviously you don't have to have it finished to this stage to do it but I've just finished it for the sake of this tutorial. So I've carved these ears like I would normal ears, however I've made them stick out a bit more. Kind of think like a fennec fox. Um, this is because when we, want the, when we have the ears to fold down, we want them to sit out. If I had them up like this and I had them fold, it kind of look a bit... It wouldn't quite be sitting where I wanted it to. So we want our ears to be facing outwards. How you carve this is entirely up to you. Have a mess around. The one thing you do want to do when you're messing around with your shape is you want to fold it. And you want to see how it looks. So as you can see, that shape kind of looks yeah, not too bad, not too bad. So I was happy with this, and I went with this. I have completely taped over it like this. So I haven't left, haven't locked it off yet. When I did my taping, I com taped completely over this ear and patterned it like I would a standard ear. As you can kind of see there with where I've drawn on where my patterns were. I've also cut out and sewn it, so it's all ready to be glued on. So you just kind of do the inside of your ear. I usually just do the inside and the outside. Of course, it will change depending on your character, but I basically do the inside and the outside because this is solid black. And then I cut and I fur it and I made the inside of the ear slightly shorter for definition and, you know, making it look like it's the inside of the ear, which isn't as furry. But yes, so that's all been furred and here they are. They are right here. So that's all been sewn together and are brushed and stuff like that. So once you've gotten your piece of your fur, so they look kind of like, you know, the same as they were when you've taped it, and you've got both of them, you're gonna start thinking about where you wanna chop it because with folded ears, you want this, the bit that folds over to kind of flop around. Looks cute, right? You want it to kind of flop around like that. So you're gonna start thinking about where you wanna chop it. Now, obviously I'm gonna mimic this, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. So. Basically, I'm going to fold it up, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this, I can see myself, I'm going to use it as a guide. So I'm going to kind of look at that and go, yeah, it's so about there, right? And what you're going to do is you would draw a line across that. So now I'm going to quickly look, compare it to my other one and I think, I don't, okay, I'm, I'm going to quickly, so I think I actually want to have this a bit further down. So yeah, we kind of want it like that. So I'm just going to edit that line touch oh much better so I've drawn that line you can see where that line is it matches my other one so you want to make sure both lines that you draw on either side of the ears you'll obviously repeat this for both sides are the same so I've kind of adjusted it to make it further down so and then you're basically just gonna take your scissors and you're gonna lob it off so lob that off and you get rid of this because you don't need it anymore all right now you have a bit of a stunted boy but it kind of you know it's kind of kind of getting there Alright, so now we're going to have a look at our pieces of fur. You've got your ear. Now this one is for this one here. You can obviously check which piece goes where, however you do it. So basically all you're going to do to test your flop is you're going to put this over the top. Like you would if you were doing it normally, except there's only a bit of a stunt where your other one was. And you just let it flop over, like that. Like that, and then you have a little floppy ear. However, we want this to be really floppy. Like, the issue with this is that, you know, it kind of like, it doesn't really stay down the way we necessarily want it to. We want it to stay down like that. So, to get these, uh, to get these ears to flop down, we're going to add weights. A weight is going to make sure that our ears stay down and when the customer tips are held back or whatever, it doesn't like stay up in weird angles, which you know, dogs sometimes they do, but we don't necessarily want that. If you're happy with how your ear is sitting, we're going to move on. So, those weights again. 
I'm currently using magnets as weights. These are very expensive weights, but at the moment I don't have any 50 cent pieces or any other kind of coins that I might want to throw in the end of the year. And these have holes in the middle, which make it very easy to sew in. That's what we are going to do right now. So I have a curved needle because I like curved needles and I've got my thread. I'm gonna thread my needle. I recommend using scissors, not your teeth. All right, I'm gonna tie a knot in the end, just like you would if you're hand sewing. So we're gonna take our ears and we're gonna turn them inside out. Now, which way you sew them, it doesn't particularly matter where you sew them. So I'm thinking if I, cause the top's gonna be over the front. So I think I'm gonna sew mine onto the back of the ear. Cause that's gonna sit kind of towards the front. Oh no, I'm gonna sew on the front. I changed my mind. So you put aside where the fuck you're gonna sew it. And you get your thread and you get whichever coin. So if, you have, if you're using a coin or something like that, you can sew a pouch or you can just do a, you can wrap it or however you want to secure it, or you can use a bit, even use a bit of glue if you really, really want. So we're just going to take this little thing. As you can see, it has a little hole in the middle. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna, gonna use a couple of stitches because it really doesn't matter how, you know, how many stitches I use for this. It just needs to make sure that it's gonna stay in. All right, so I've done a couple of stitches onto there. I'm just going to tie that off, just with a little knot underneath the fabric. Underneath all the other stitches as well. Oh, ow. Stab myself. Right. I've got to wait. Aha. So I'm going to do that to the other one as well. Alright, so now we've got ears with untrimmed threads, please excuse that, with two magnets in the ends. Now we have got both of our ears, now my glue gun is nice and hot, very hot, and we are going to start working on gluing these. So first I'm going to check that they're the right side. So I think this one is the longer side, so therefore it's going to go on the left ear. I can generally tell which ear is left and right because one side is generally longer than the other one. So I'm gonna say this one's the left side. And that's just gonna like, when it sits on there, it's just gonna flop over and the magnet's gonna pull it down. It's not magnetic to anything, it's just a weight. So don't get confused. You can use whatever you want. People use like little, like the glass pebbles you get and like succulents and stuff. So, all right. So the way I'm gonna start doing this, I'm just gonna put a, bit of, a little bit of glue. I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom because I'm gonna sew that to the base of the head eventually. This is just to keep it on the actual base. There goes one of my magnets. I'm just going to add a little wibbly bit on the back as well. incredibly awkward. I'm going to use the inside out technique because I'm a dumbass. That seems way too unsafe to, for me to be promoting on the internet. Um, so yeah, turn it inside out and just roll it on. Right, that's much nicer. <laughs> much nicer way to do it. Yep, and just check that all of your edges touch where they're supposed to go. Just gonna make sure that all of that is sitting how we want it to. Yeah. And then we have a doggo ear. Have a look at it. Yep. Cool. We've got a doggo ear. Make sure that everything is sitting how you want it to. So now that I'm looking at that. 
I might make adjustments later, so for example I might lob off a bit more this side or lob off a bit more together so it comes down a bit further, but that's of course up to you. I think I'm happy with this and then you just glue on the other one, exactly the same. So I think that's a pretty good tutorial, I think that's kind of pretty self-explanatory as to what you do. Make sure to always give it a good brush and make it all nice and neat. And yes, enjoy your new flutterbuddies. I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick tutorial. I just wanted to cover it since it has been a very, very highly requested item. So I hope you guys enjoyed. What would you like to learn how to do next? I'm thinking attached feet paws. Maybe, maybe we'll see. But if you guys have anything specific you wanna see, let me know down below and I'll see you next time.